What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode. I'm Sam. I was about to say, and I'm Sam, because <laughs> I was going to finish your sentence for you. I know. Well, and I'm Taylor, and we're recording this episode real time. Yeah. It's Wednesday. It's going up Wednesday. It's Valentine's Day. Yes, it is Valentine's Day, and we're both wearing pink right now. Yeah, sitting in our pink chairs. I have red nails. I kind of have pink. Some of them are falling off because they're press-ons, and I've been moving, so... Each day, I think like one or two just pops right back off. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so dumb. I was talking to someone at the Super Bowl, which we'll talk about. I'm like, yeah, I did red. So I was like, oh, both teams are red. You know, red works. And she's like, and it's Valentine's Day. I'm like, so true. Yeah. That makes so much more sense. That's actually a way better reason to have red nails mm-hmm. than because both the Super Bowl teams. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And my red nails fit the vibe. I definitely need to fix up my press-ons, which is why I like the press-ons lately, because you can just put them right back no, on. they're great. As long as you don't lose it when it falls off. Sometimes they're you great. lose them. Well, the pack comes with extra. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I need to do it. Anyways, do you have a favorite of the week? My favorite of the week is my aura ring. Yeah, I saw you talking about that. I love my aura ring. We're also going out of order, because like, neither of us I know. are for when things give us a sec. Um, I love my aura ring. I'm obsessed with it. I went through a phase of not wearing it because I was big, big lifting all the time. And that was like the only exercise I did. And if you're trying to like deadlift heavy or something, you can't wear this. It's a clunky ring. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not going to work if you're trying to PR a deadlift. You can't really wear this. I mean, you could take it off and like whatever, but it's not convenient for that. But recently, I'm just obsessed with it. I love seeing my sleep score. And it, like, tracks your cycle for you if you're, like, into the temperature stuff. Tells you if you're stressed. It's so accurate on your steps, I feel, because it's literally always on your fucking finger. Yeah. Like, I'm getting my steps, like, from the second I wake up and, like, go pee. Mm Mm-hmm. God, my steps are killing it these days. I love my aura ring. I love it. Yeah, 75 days, hard. 45 is today. Yeah. 30 more. Yeah, or (laughs) 20. I might stop at the end of February. No, you got to do the whole thing. I know, but, like, my family comes, and, like, I just, like, I'm not, like, certain, but, like, I've been saying to, like, like multiple times, I think I'm just going to stop at the end of February, but, like, it feels so good that I'll probably keep doing similar stuff, like, for weeks after. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess. Because, like, I just feel 10 out of 10. What's your favorite? My favorite of the week is the the patches. I don't know if it's called, the brand is called The Patch. Good Patch? Good Patch. Oh, I worked with them. The Calm One. I, guys, I'm not even kidding. I have had the most stressful week, obviously, because I moved and I just got another dog, which we'll get into. But yesterday was the most stressful day ever. And I put one of these on and I'm not even kidding. Calm down instantly. So good to hear. Instantly. I I was like, I need to buy, because I got it in a PR box of Mm -hmm. just, my manager sent like a PR box for the holidays, just a bunch of random crap. And I finally unboxed it because I moved because I was like, I'm not going to unbox this right now. I'm moving in 30 days. Right. And I put it on because it was just a sample pack and it was one of them. And I was like, I need to get more of these. They are insane. Yeah. I mean, I always like them. I never use the calm ones. Oh. But like, I'm also so placebo person. No, I'm not even kidding. Like even my like, I was like, which I just got Botox in my jaw, but like I can still feel it. It's not going to completely take away, like, the tension in my jaw, but, like, it helps with it. But yesterday, I was, like, going fucking crazy, like, and I put this on my wrist, instantly calmed What's it down. What's in it? I don't know. You don't know. You I didn't, didn't look. look. I just saw the calm. <laughs> okay. That's when you know, like, I'm being le- so legit right now when I say something's my favorite, when I literally don't even know what's in it, and I'm not, like, spitting facts because, I don't know, when you do, like, an ad, you kind of have to, like, explain everything. But no, like, I'm being dead ass. This is insane. Which I need to take it off because I put it on yesterday. I used the hangover one one time. I used the hangover one, too. I think that one works. I'm going to say it works. Yeah. I'm going to try them all. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them. There's, like, four or five different versions. Yeah, I've, I've used the energy one for before my workout because I worked with them and I used the energy one. And, like, I don't know. Like, I kind of, like, think they work. Yeah. You can get them at Target if you're wondering yeah, where you can Target get them. Target and, like, the beauty... Section, or at least like in our target they're kind of in the middle of the makeup section yeah um and then one thing about us you say yours is more big give me a okay to think about it okay one thing about me is i'm a family of three a family of three she got a dog i know probably people think it right before that like <gasps> what <laughs> pregnant <gasps> oh I no wish. no dude someone actually commented on one of my tiktoks the other day are you pregnant question mark because i had like an em- i posted like an emotional tiktok i was like what bro what i'm literally on my period <laughs> 
Listen, in my dreams. No, literally no. Hell freaking no. Never. Well, not never, but like not right now. Um, yeah, so I got another dog and I kept it on the download for the last month or so because I just have so much shit going on and I don't want to explain my s- explain anything to you guys until like it's in the moment going on. So we got cheese. I just picked him up from the same breeder that Mac is through. So they're technically like third cousins or something. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Keep it in the fam. <laughs> Keep it in the fam. So they do like a nanny system where they will fly the dog in because the breeder's out of Florida. And... I, kn- I know the owner pretty well now at this point just because I got Mac and then we were communicating, whatever. And the reason I ever went through that breeder is because a referral, like one of my friends from back home used them. I don't think I would ever go through a breeder where I didn't have a good referral from someone I know. Um, just because you never know out there, like what people do. So got Mac, obviously. Mac is fucking perfect. And then I was like, you know what? Let's get another dog. So we named him Cheese. And I know his nicknames are probably going to be like Mott's or Blue. Just random cheeses. Provolone. I'm just going to have such a fun time with his names. I just call him Cheese Man. Yeah, Cheese Man. I call them... I, I call them both um, man. Because it like, just has to like flow off the tongue. I call my cat Kitty Man. Um, <laughs> it's just, it just works. I don't call him Mac Man. Mac Man. I don't call it because I call Mackie. But like it just rolls off the tongue like Cheese Man. Dude, like I've that. been saying cheese so much the last 24 hours. I bet. It's like engraved in my brain. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Because I just need him to remember his name. He's he's really stupid he guys like this face on this dog like it's the dumbest dog face you've ever seen but he's so cute it's okay. so cute but you're like there is nothing going on in in his head there's this, zero so the first time i ever picked up mac mac was crying like crazy the first day like when i picked him up shaking like freaking out i picked up cheese yesterday and i'm not even kidding this man was obsessed with me the second he was on my lap he w- i was trying to get him to like not be on my lap and I kept had to like push him off. I'm like, bro, like chill for a little bit. Like Mac is gonna see you doing this, so you cannot claim my territory. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's just so funny. But I, I love him already. He has like a little bit of a tongue issue, or just kind of is always hanging out. It's super so cute. Yeah, it's so cute. It's really cute. And his eyes are a little bit cr- not crisscross, but they both go like out- outwards. Outwards. No, he looks really dumb. Yeah, he looks dumb. But I, you can already tell their little personalities. Like Mac is a little more anxious, needy. And I feel like cheese is just kind of like, yeah, I'm just here, man. Yeah, they're kind of coexisting right now. But over the last 24 hours, they have definitely gone closer. Last night, my boyfriend came over and we got them to like kind of cuddle next I to saw each your other. Story of them like, yeah, I was like, oh my god, this is They'll the closest. They'll never be as close as Phineas and Mac. But okay, chill with it. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. But um, then this morning they were playing together, which is good because she's okay. got the zoomies. He, like, gets the zoomies by looking in the mirror, seeing his reflection. Matt used to do that. Yeah. So he's freaking out at his reflection. And then all of a sudden, he starts doing circle donuts around the island table. And then Max starts chasing him. Oh, and then I they need to <laughs> see him get the zoomies. It's so funny. But he's a cute little guy. I know. What's he's your beauty. one thing about you? I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit more later. Yeah. In. One thing about me is I'm in desperate need of a sneaky link. Yeah. And guys, I think I got it. Yeah. It, maybe. No, I you know, I did. You guys haven't even hung out. No, no, I did. It's going to just check back in after, not next weekend, two weeks. Check back in. Okay, but the only thing that's going to make a sneaky link work, though, you can't be, like, going on a date. No. Because when my boyfriend was my sneaky link. No, we're not talking about going on dates. No, I know that. But I'm just saying, like, are you, is your first time you ever going to hang out going out? I think the first time we're ever going to actually hang out is after I'm out at the bars being like, can we meet up? Okay. Waiting till you're drunk? Yeah, well, I'm not really drinking that much right now. No, you're not drinking at all. Well, I'm, even if I'm like, yeah, I'm not drinking at all. Maybe like he'll be drunk. He said he'd go to Barry's with me. That's a date, Taylor. You, no, can't, go, was like, you can't go to Barry's with your sneaky link. No, but that was like weeks ago, though. So like maybe he won't now. Because that was just kind of a random like, oh, we'll hang, like, we'll like talk. But now if we're already talking, it's like he doesn't have to do that. Yeah. That was just kind of like a conversation starter. Okay, good. <laughs> Those, you know like it was just kind of like conversation starter but like i don't think it'll be like follow through yeah we'll see no yeah. if if he is then you guys gotta like fuck in the bathroom or something that's the only way it works out because yeah no no, no. i think it's it just like on the weekend like i was like we'll go out next weekend 
Yeah. We're texting like all day. I'm not even going to be here next weekend. Perfect. <laughs> so well, it's not like we live together. <laughs> I know, but then I could just like do things. Because well, like, we were literally talking about this last night, guys. I was like, yeah, because she texted me about the sneaky leak. And I was like, yeah, I'm not even in the house anymore. So you have full range to the house. No, it's just like I can make bad decisions. Like I could like hang out with my ex-boyfriend, you know? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> like you would have no idea. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> no. One of my friends sent me a screenshot of a video I reposted um, that says, and I got you guys um, keep seeing it and like will tag me in it like, Taylor, what the fuck? Because, like, it obviously says Taylor Wilson reposted. It says, no roster, just a girl in her 20s convinced she's going to marry her ex when the time is right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, it has 1,500 comments, and I bet, like, a good 100 of them are people being like, yo, girl. <laughs> what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my friend sent it to me. I was like, let me live. Uh, but, yeah, I just, like, need a sneaky link because I'm going insane. I'm 45 days celibate. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Is that a long time? No, that's not even a long time. I feel like I went way longer when I was yeah, single yes. than fucking I someone. I think it's just hard when, like, you were in a relationship. Yeah, I think I went, like, almost three months. They're going to say three years. Three months. I was like, damn, you got no play. <laughs> no. <laughs> had no hoes. <laughs> <laughs> really, though. But you were also making a conscious effort not... Okay, but to be fair, I don't necessarily need to, like, actually go all the way with someone like that. Like, I just need, like like kiss a boy or something you know yeah i don't need to like have sex with them i did that for a while and that's what I'm like saying. this like, time last year like, i could do like that's fine yeah it's more just like the like a t like corner of buford's bar right or cat's pajamas right no or like home no <laughs> <laughs> out in public <laughs> both okay great <laughs> making out in a bar is so fun like that's what i need you know it's even more fun when you get the adrenaline rush of knowing that there's another guy there that's interested in you <laughs> yeah Last time Stir I made out with a bar, I made out with anyone or kissed anyone was early December. That was the last time. Oh, wait, no, that's such a lie. Late December. That was New Year's last Eve? No. Oh. Did okay, but New Year's Eve doesn't count. That was like, <laughs> I'm talking about like actually like kiss a boy was like my ex-boyfriend at home. Oh. Like <laughs> kiss in a bar. Yeah. In December, I made out in a bar twice. Damn. That's pretty good. A lot of exes around here. In this yeah, but like that one doesn't really count. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. That one doesn't really count, though. That's not really like, I don't count that as an ex-boyfriend. I count that as like just someone I know. Anyways, we have so much hot gossip about the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's like the big thing that everyone is talking about, the thing on everyone's lips. I was so rooting for the 49ers and the clip of Brock Purdy walking with all the confetti falling on his head, but it wasn't his confetti. Really made me upset because I'm not a Chiefs hater. I'm not a Travis and Taylor hater either. So like Swifties, like don't bully me. I just think like they're so on top of the world. They could have let the other people have it. They have it all. Like, Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, they have it all. Patrick Mahomes has it all. Let the other people have it. Let the other people have their their moment. I'm going to tell you right now, guys. You have no idea I, what's going on. No, like, I understand the, the sport of football, but I could care less about who's winning, who's playing. Like, could care less. It took me a while looking at the screen to figure out which team was what because they're both red and white. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, when it was far away, obviously with the helmets and the logo, I could tell. But when it was, like, a yeah. far away clip, I'm like, at the beginning of the game, I was like, I could not tell you who's who. I'm pretty, I'm more involved in pop culture than Sam with, like, celebrities. So that's why I'm a little bit more into, like, football. I only know football and people that are relevant in pop culture. I could not tell you someone on the fucking, I don't even know a team that's not relevant because I don't know. If it's, like, an irrelevant team, bitch, I couldn't tell you shit. The Patriots like, are irrelevant now. They're irrelevant right <laughs> now, right? Couldn't tell you anything about it, right? I am only aware of what's going on because, like, I love the WAGs. Like, this was a very WAG-heavy game. It was, like, the coolest WAGs ever. Obsessed. Travis and Taylor after were really, really cute. Like, they were really cute, and that's kind of undeniable. And I'm actually really happy for them. Like, he was all, like, Viva Las Vegas being crazy. And she was just kind of, like, there for it. And then they were, like, hugging after. And it was really cute. They're, like, really in love. It's really cute. I just don't think I have the time for pop culture. There's just so much shit going on. It's and I'm like, how do I have the time? I listen to. 
Yeah, I just like I don't have the time. I only know because the podcast I listen to. Sorry, guys, if you want to come here for pop culture, you're gonna get little snippets. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get the whole news forecast for the week. Yeah, it's only because of the podcast I listen to that that keeps me in the fucking know. Which of it one? All. I listen to the toast, but I don't really like to give them um, attention. So yeah, that's true. Because I don't really agree with a lot of things they say anyways but they keep me up to date on pop culture and that's why i listen to it because it's every single day anyways that's besides the point um then they went to the club and taylor posted a tiktok in the club and she never does that like she dude that was crazy yeah it was crazy it came up on my my for you page i'm like what the fuck is this from her account herself and i don't know much about taylor swift before this but from what i've got from what the public is saying she has never once posted a boyfriend Mm -hmm. it's her first time posting a boyfriend ever well who have her exes been joe alwyn which was her six year boyfriend who's like a kind of random he's like a model or an actor or something but he's like not that's relevant they did for like six years before travis kelsey she dated um the lead singer of the 1975 oh and then she dated harry styles well um, John Mayer, Calvin Harris. I had no idea you know about who all Calvin these. Calvin Harris is. Well, no, I just had no idea that she dated any of these people. Yeah. Taylor Lautner. When was that one? Harry Styles, back in the day. Oh, okay, I was going to say. Like fr- these are all like um, through the. Like, some of them are way back in the day. Yeah, sounds like it. And also, I don't know how many of these are dated, dated, or like dated but they weren't boyfriend girlfriend i feel like the reason she started posting him though or just posting with him vice versa is because it kind of originated from social media because of the way he was on social media talking about her like i think it stemmed from social media i think it's also like he's so public and like obviously she's the well they all, all of his exes are well i think the people i listed are other famous people but they're not public show their um personal life famous people yeah travis kelsey has a podcast yeah that's like sharing a lot of your life she's never dated someone with that level of i share my entire life online and then the nfl like you're mic'd up in the games they do all the shit following you around it's so 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 public so it's like why not post it on social media yeah it's already you're filmed at every angle yeah the TikTok that she posted in the club was very interesting. I was like, damn. I'm obsessed. I still can't picture them being people that are compatible, but like. Same. Like, but the I way don't know them. So like, I don't know. Like the way he was dressed in the club compared to her. She, like, she was just wearing like a casual little outfit. And then oh. he's wearing like million dollar yeah, yeah, yeah. worth of like chains and rings. I, I'm like, I'm raising my hand. I'm like, what can I say something? I always again, Swifty is like, don't murder me. You guys are really scary. And it makes me not ever want to talk about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift always dresses really, really bad. She literally always looks awful. No, she does. At the Grammy, she looked literally awful. And it's it's just like people are putting her in bad outfits. Okay, she looked really cute at the Super Bowl. Like, in at the club, like, she was wearing a really cute outfit. She was wearing, like, a corset, and she had her hair in a cute ponytail, and she was wearing really cool pants. I was like, did you fire your stylist? Did she needs you- to pick up his stylist. Yeah, like, someone got it together, because she looked really, really cute at the Super Bowl. And normally, like, sorry, I think she looks, I think she wears really bad outfits, and I think it's, like, a disgrace. Ice Spice was with her at the Super Bowl, which is so funny, because... There was all these like pictures of Ice Spice. Does she have any Jason relevance Kelsey? to anyone that was on any of the teams or no? Ice Spice? Yeah. No, she's friends with Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. Because she's um has a feature on one of her songs. Mm. There's pictures of Ice Spice talking to Jason Kelsey, and it's just like, what the fuck are Ice Spice and Jason Kelsey talking about? And it's like the people were quoting it like, "So am I the shit or the fart?" <laughs> like, like him asking Ice Spice, <laughs> like I don't know. It's just like, wow, what were they talking about? And like, that's just so random. Famous people, like, mixing circles. I don't know if it was the same day club because I only saw once a bit of that one video that she posted, but then there was another club video that was circulating, and Jason was on the stage wearing a mask. The same with day. The, was it? And then with the, the tie-dye shirt. Yeah. I was like, he he is me. He is me. He is you. <laughs> you are a lot like Jason Kelsey. Yeah. I was like, I love this man. Like, so funny. But you're also a lot like Travis Kelsey because Jason Kelsey wears like flip flops and sweatpants for a game. Yeah. Day. Yeah. yeah I saw are that. A lot like Jason Kelsey, though. There was like a thirst trap video of Jason Kelsey walking into the game wearing his grouffit. 
And everyone in the comments was like, oh my God, his wife doing him so good. The grout fit. Like, oh, he looks so good in the grout fit. Like everyone was just like thirst trapping for him in his great outfit. I, I was like, Jason y'all, Kelsey. chill for it. I love Jason Kelsey. I really do like the Kelseys a lot. Um, so that's why I'm kind of a fan of Taylor Travis because I, I do genuinely really enjoy them. I think it's cool they do a podcast. I'm like, you're too famous for a podcast. Why are you podcasting? I think that's what makes them famous, though. Like, that makes them so known in the NFL because who else is, yeah, like, that connected so with their known, audience? Like, before. No, not known, but like you were saying earlier, like, sharing such personal stuff. Because mm-hmm. everyone else is just in the NFL. You see them. They're famous for playing football and being yeah. good at it. Yeah, that's true. Like, imagine if Tom Brady had a podcast. Yeah. You would have felt so much more connected to him. Yeah, I think my connection to Tom Brady is what's missing in my life. Yeah, right? Like, why can't? I, why am I not connected? Oh, my God, you know, well, Gronk, <laughs> I think Gronk, no, maybe he doesn't have a podcast, but I've seen him on podcasts. Um, other things from the Super Bowl relevant to talk about Alex Earl and her boyfriend. No, like, we can't even skip the halftime show. Oh, the halftime show? Yeah, with Usher. Oh, so bad. No, guys, it was so under budget. It I, So, like, it, it first started, oh, also, I'm glad I'm not alone in thinking everyone he brought out was someone else okay yes i saw this I video i thought it was just me being dumb because i literally go is that CeeLo green i said that i, I said is that me. kanye i go is that CeeLo green was not CeeLo green all of our fr- kanye we're like no that's not kanye can't be kanye i guess her name is her h-e-r i don't know who that is don't come for me i'm like northwest yeah <laughs> i was like why is northwest with usher and then i was like oh kanye Kanye is there with North? CeeLo Green wasn't CeeLo Green. It was, I don't know who. It wasn't Kanye. It was, just, it was Will I Am. Alicia it, Keys sounded real bad. And then people, if you look up the performance now, they like dubbed it over. What do you mean dubbed it over? Like her voice was cracking in the original. Uh-huh. If you watch the performance back, they like fixed it. Yeah, that the, the thing with the whole performance itself, not even the singing, the music or anything, I hated how everyone's outfit was different. It, it looked like, so unorganized. Everyone was dancing differently. Mm-hmm. There was no stage for the first half of the performance. I was like, this just looks so unprofessional. We just kept saying it looks very, very low budget. It was hard to hear. Yeah. Everything. And every time there was a singer, like the national anthem, everything. Um, I was like, why can't I hear him? Mm-hmm. I couldn't really hear him singing, which is like someone on the back end fucked up. And on, then like, the that audio. girl that was doing the guitar was not even playing the guitar. No. It was so, like, she was air playing. Like, it was, her it was hand so was at weird. least two inches off the guitar. I thought it looked very low budget. I thought he picked really bad songs. Like, there were some songs, I'm like, why didn't he sing that? He didn't sing more. You really want more? I know, if I'm going to perform at the ha- halftime show, I'm going to pick my top overall songs. I think he sang too many slow songs. Yeah. Like, groovy songs. Like, mm-hmm. bitches, this is the halftime show yeah get with the energy i thought the roller skates were cool i fuck with people on roller skates i thought that was cool but also it looked low budget it looked like my high school dance show why didn't justin bieber come out that was the that was the letdown when everyone realized justin bieber wasn't coming out it was it was a tough moment for society as a whole hear me out maybe he didn't go on because he already got picked for next year's show. I don't think Justin Bieber would do it. That would be so Justin freaking Bieber's cool. Justin Bieber is not like a performer. Okay, well, guys, we were talking about this during the halftime I show. I wish, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love Justin Bieber. We were talking about this at, um, watching it. In order to perform for the halftime show, you have to be someone that everyone's going to know their music. From younger kid all the way up to... A fucking grandma. Because everyone's watching the halftime show. So someone like Usher is a good person. He's a good person. He just did not pick the correct songs. Justin Bieber, also perfect. Younger kids are going to know his songs. And then people will. Like, my mom knows every Justin Bieber yeah, song. Yeah, I see. I would argue Justin Bieber's not great for it. How? Because I don't think. I think it's really a specific niche of people that like it. You think so? Not specific. Like, specific as in, like. My dad doesn't. Justin Bieber's on like the radio. He's on yeah. everything. Yeah, but like I like there's such a weird criteria to do Super Bowl. You have to be really, really famous, but also really like washed up. I feel like he is like his m- m- recent music over the last like two. He's three washed years. up by choice. Yeah, he just like doesn't want to do it anymore. I know. Like he's not washed up because like no one cares. He's washed up because well he was like sick or whatever. Who did it last year? 
Rihanna. Yep. Oh, Rihanna. And Rihanna ate that shit up. Yeah. And I, at first, I when I first watched Rihanna's, I was like, oh, I didn't know how much I liked it. Just because I'm very hypercritical, I think, of Super Bowl performances. But then when you compare back to back, she was amazing. One of my favorite Super Bowl halftime shows is the J-Lo Shakira one. Like, those are perfect people because, like, J-Lo's really famous, but J-Lo music isn't a hit. Like, perfect. Mm-hmm. J-Lo's a perfect person. Um... Bruno Mars was really good. I thought The weekend was really good, which is kind of crazy because The weekend was kind of in his peak and he did the Super Bowl. And I feel like you don't do the Super Bowl when you're in your peak. But his was really good. It was high budget. It was like big time. Yeah, I feel like, like a lot going on. You need to start off at least because I saw Usher obviously had the bigger stage toward the end. But I feel like if you're going to start, start on the bigger stage. There was because at the wrong. beginning it was he was wrong. starting on the turf. I was like, him and Alicia Keys were also like fucking on the stage. Yeah, that Both was weird. Both of them are married. That was really weird. I was like, I I googled mid performance. Are Alicia Keys and Usher married? Are they together? Because I don't know. I don't keep up, so I had to look it up. Because I'm like, oh my god, are they together? They're fucking dancing like it. If they're not, they are now. Yeah. Like, god damn, he like was smacking her ass. I felt a little bit violated. I know. I didn't like it. Felt a little bit violated. Uh, Queen Reba did the national anthem play. Um, but yeah, I thought the halftime show was really bad. And I don't think it's necessarily that Usher puts on a bad show. I feel like an Usher concert would fucking really be fun. But I don't think it was a good Super Bowl halftime. Yeah. What was the other thing you wanted to say? I thought you oh, wrote it down. I was talking about Alex Earl and Braxton Berrios over the whole weekend. Yeah. Um, I just think they're really cute. And I feel like he's like really in love with her, even though I think he's a shady motherfucker. And I'll keep my guard up and I will die on that hill that I think he's a shady motherfucker. I think he's Fine. smart enough, no, though, not to do something bad in this relationship because he's so- fucked if he does. But like the Sophia Koopa thing was so public. And like, I'm sorry. Yeah, but she doesn't have a, nearly enough of a following slash. Cult. Yeah, but it involved Alex Earl. But I'm saying is Alex Earl has such a cult following. Yeah. Everyone went against Sophia. I just think because I'm sorry. Also, we'll die on this hill. Braxton and Alex were the people in the wrong. Not necessarily Alex because she didn't know. But like their relationship was in the wrong. And like it sucks that she doesn't like. Did you see Sophia's dating someone new? Yeah, she's Ben. Yeah. They went and, on like a little trip. Like him. I know. <laughs> I know. And he looks like him. Uh, I don't know. I just think Braxton is shady. But. Him and Alex, like, he, like, really does a lot in her TikToks. Yeah. And it's little things like that that's, like, green flag. Yeah. That he so is comfortable like that in her, in her videos. Yeah. I think it's cute. I, I feel agree. like they're really in love. Happy for them. Anything from, like, the Grammys that we missed that we didn't really talk about last week? From the Grammys? Or not the Grammys. The, um, what was on last week? The Grammys? Yeah, the Grammys. I've, no, we talked about it. We did? But I want to talk about The Bachelor. I no, oh, I haven't you listened. Need to catch I, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I watched it. Last I've been night. way too busy. Okay, well, it's just still fuck Sydney. Yeah, I made a TikTok about it. Everyone um, is a fan. I love Maria, and I was texting one of our friends about it. This isn't like spoiler. This is just like generic. The whole situation. It pisses me off that people see Maria and they're like, she's mean because she's hot and she's confident in herself. Yeah, like all of you bitches are just being fake nice. But you think she's being mean? She's being a confident, sexy motherfucker. And like, beca- and if you see that as mean, like, we will never get along if you think she's mean. Mm-hmm. She's literally just being herself. Like, she's the most personality. She's sexy as fuck. She like, barely One wears thing makeup. I will. She barely wears makeup. They put on like these evening gowns. Bitch has like concealer and mascara on. Stunning. One thing I will say, though, is I do think the very beginning of this whole thing that went down when Maria did kind of laugh about her age and that like little conversation that kind of escalated the whole big situation that's going on. Like she did do that, but she just said, like, I'm old, too. Yeah, but like like, it was kind of like in a like if I can't remember the exact conversation, but she was like shading at her a little bit, but like barely. Yeah. But I, like, I think this other girl's fucking batshit crazy. Yeah. But my rule, I've always said this. If I was bachelorette, my number one rule would be the person that comes to me and like wants to take away fucking time and conversation by coming to me and tattletailing, you're gone. 
Maybe both of you will be gone. But if you come to me and tattletale, you're out. That's like my rule. If I'm bachelor, come to me and tattletale and I'm sending your ass home. Don't yeah, I would I would say that right at the beginning. Don't come tattle on me. Now, unless the entire house is in agreement and there's like group tattletale that everyone hates them, maybe. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to come tattletale to me, you're going home. Maybe yeah. you'll both go home. But I don't fucking want your tattletaling ass. Especially when most of the drama for the fo- first, like at least any of the drama that I've seen where people have tattletailed, it's like it's so fucking irrelevant. You're- People that don't know each other in a house dating the same guy. If someone was like, this girl's being mean to me, I'd be like, I wouldn't expect you all to be besties. Get also, over it. One You're of 30 them, years old. They go, what, two of them got in a fight like, yeah, I'm your friends. Like, but I have like, they were just talking about being friends. I'm like, honestly, I wouldn't call any of those girls my friend if I knew them for a week. If I knew them for a week, you're not my friend. And you're on and we're, camera. We're on a camera and we're dating the same man. You're yeah. not my friend. You're not my friend. Actually, I hate you. Yeah, like... I, I owe you nothing. <laughs> no, if you come and tattletale to me and I'm the bachelor, I'm sending your ass home that instant. Like, they're 30. Like, yeah. you're 30 years old. Like, you're not okay. Well, isn't Sydney, like, young? She's 23 or something? Whatever. Yeah. I heard she owns, like, a store in her hometown and people have been, like, passing it and trying to sneak peeks of, like, if she's in there or not. I feel bad, though. I do because, like, I don't want anyone getting that much mass amount of hate, but, like... Then don't do that on TV. But also, don't turn off your comment section and all of that because I would probably turn off my comment no, because you after. you're creating a space for people to want to talk about you by creating videos because they can't just leave the hate on your page now because they have so much fuel in them. They see the comments off, they're gonna make videos. Yeah, like just let them all leave the hate. Delete delete your socials. Let them leave the hate on your page so you can't see them. So they don't make videos. Yeah, I just think you'll have to watch the other episode, too, because another girl was also being a big old bitch. And to anyone listening on here, if you're going to leave any hate, any hate comment on anyone's stuff, like, what are you doing? Seriously, what are you doing? Yeah, like, I would never comment on her picture or make a video. I guess I did make a video kind of about her, about the situation. Yeah. I just said I'm team Maria. Yeah, but that's different. Like, people are coming at her for all sorts of things yeah 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 like i'm not gonna make videos and call her like an ugly bitch yeah like but you put yourself on reality tv so you're giving people the opportunity to talk about the drama on the reality tv yeah that's why you're on this tv show yeah i just can't imagine like taking my phone and like angrily typing something mean and pressing enter especially when people try to come for like looks like if someone tries to come for like she's ugly like hey she's not like, when people try to come for, like, a pretty girl's looks just to be, I don't know, like, to make a point. I'm like, don't start trying to call her ugly. She's pretty. Mm-hmm. Like, don't go for that. Because that's not true. Yeah. I hate when I hate when girls do that. Because it's like, be fucking for real right now. Like, you know she's not ugly. Yeah. I'll only go for looks if it's true. Yeah. And you piss me off. Yeah. Select few. You have to piss me off. Which, speaking, okay, speaking of, like, just mean girls in general, like, can we talk about how social media is really going for full circle for us right now oh yeah guys obviously we've made podcast episodes about our like cancellation moment y'all know y'all were probably there people that were big like proponents in our cancellation big um leaders of the movement are following us on instagram yeah like the ones that made videos about us or made comments about us on or other people's never videos spoke to us again and unfollowed us during the whole thing are following us on instagram yeah and i'm just like i want a public apology yeah i want a video on your tiktok full face saying i'm sorry yeah so i just think that's like hmm funny to note it's funny to see the the sides they'll take in the moment because they don't want backlash they're like oh sam and taylor getting heat i want no part of it unfollow comment something on the other team side oh it sizzles out two years go by sam and taylor are still relevant okay i guess i'll follow them again like yeah. fuck off <laughs> yeah uh, so funny i feel like we have a lot of weekend to talk about yeah we do we like spend a lot of our weekend together yeah we didn't take a single picture no i was so mad about that <laughs> because me and taylor's like well actually let's start on friday what the fuck did i do friday yeah i always got to go right back to my photos because everything just blends together friday we went out Oh, yeah, Friday was the night we went out because I didn't want to be hung over for the Super Bowl. So I was like, you know what? Friday night, I'll go out. 
So that way I got Saturday to Raw and then Sunday, you know, still Raw did on Sunday, but either way, it just didn't feel as bad because I wasn't hungover. But my boyfriend and I went over to Samatoro's for some pizza at a food truck. This place is amazing. It's like New York style pizza. It's so good. And when I got there, I was filming and he was like, oh my God, do you want to like come inside and film the process? I was like, uh, not really because that's, that's a little bit intimidating and it's a food truck. It's really small. I don't want to go in there, but let me know when the pizza's done and I'll come in and record cutting it. So I did that, had some pizza and then I went home. I'm pretty much like packed up at this point because I was moving on Monday so I didn't really have a lot to work with when I was getting ready. Um, but I changed my outfit and then Taylor and I ended up going to downtown to grab drinks together before meeting up with everyone else. Because one thing about us is we are not going to go straight to the bars and get a tequila soda. We're going to go to get a cute cocktail before we actually go out. A hundred percent, except I did get a literal coffee. Um, <laughs> I got a literal coffee on friday she got a virgin um espresso martini a latte if you will <laughs> um but yeah virgin, i should have asked him like can you pour it in a cocktail glass you honestly could have gotten it in a cocktail glass if you asked we were the only two there guys it would have been way less liquid but like i didn't really need it that much i just wanted something and and i need caffeine if i'm gonna be out sober at the bars so or else i'm gonna be yawning yeah like crazy so i need caffeine even though caffeine at like fucking eight o'clock is not great gotta do what you gotta do we went to irene's which is right between fifth and sixth street on west side and if you need somewhere to go that's last minute you don't need a reservation you want to walk in there maybe to get a drink get some food irene's is always empty when i go it's always empty which is weird because if you look up places to eat it comes up kind of first yeah i'm always and it's a spot like the spot itself is perfect perfect location it always comes up when you look up places to eat like it's not like a hidden gem no but it's always empty yeah i don't really understand that i don't know but yeah we went there and then the outside was empty so of course we took pictures yeah we sat outside it was a little bit cold but not too bad it was maybe what 65 degrees i was chilling yeah cold you kept saying you. i I was a little cold for sure i I was a-okay so we like drank our drinks and then we went next door to takira mucho and Sam got another drink and I brought Guys, it in my oh latte. my my biggest regret was asking them for their spicy marg, which usually when they make me a spicy marg, they'll use their like tahine chamoy mixture. And this man literally handed me a spicy marg that had three massive jalapenos in it with the seeds. I am sipping on this drink and I am choking on the seeds. Like it was the spiciest drink I've ever gotten. I'm like coughing between each drink and the drinks itself at Takira Mucho are so strong. Like, you are going to get hammered after one drink. <laughs> That's just how it is. And they always flirt with you, too, and give you free alcohol. My drink, what was it? I think $6. $6 for pure gasoline. Oh, love that place. We need to go back there more often. Yeah. But I will not be getting a spicy mark. Yeah, it's really the fucking spot. It was like throwback. We used yeah. to always go there. Um, and then we finally were able to meet up with our friends and I was really vibing sober this night. I'll have to say everywhere we went, I was having a really good time the whole night. Sober is one of my favorite sober night outs. I don't know why, like the vibe just has to be there. I like did not miss alcohol yeah, at all. Only when we were getting drinks alone. Cause I'm like, well, a cocktail would be fun. But when we were at the bars... I had no desire to get a drink. I was, I didn't really think about it once. Yeah. The girls that we met up with were hammered though. Hammered. They did the, um, it was one of our mutual friends birthday. And so our like good friends went on it and they went on like the bike tour thing. So you pedal on a bike and you bar hop and they started that at four. We didn't meet up with them until nearly nine o'clock. They were so drunk, but it was so funny. Like, I love when you meet up with yeah, your... Yeah, they were your, gone. You meet up with your girlfriends. They're super drunk, and they just, like, spill all the tea. Like, they're just like... Ah, and like, there's nothing like being dead sober and truly seeing someone's drunk face. Yeah. Bro. Like, it's next level. You're like, wow, this is what I look like on those days? Fuck. Because I was like, well, you're you're gone. Yeah. The, um... West Side wasn't even too fun, so I was very no. antsy to get over to Lucky Duck on the east side. So I kind of gathered everyone. I was like, yo, let's go over to Lucky Duck. Let's get an espresso martini. Everyone was down because we've been going to Lucky Duck the last three weekends and sitting at a picnic table. So Taylor drove the gir- the girls, right? Yeah, that's the bright side of not drinking is 
Yeah. You can bring your car and you don't have to Uber and you can just drive people everywhere. And it's very, very convenient. It's a big plus of the not drinking. But the east side is just so much more fun now because it's not like 20 degrees. Yeah. So it's really nice to be able to sit at a picnic table and not want to actually die. Um, We got ducks. I didn't get a drink, but I got food. Yeah, we had to get the everyone got a round of espresso martinis there. Those are the hands down the best espresso martinis. And of course, I go up to get one and I come back and my boyfriend also had one for me because they got there, what, 10 minutes before us. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even thinking that they were there before us. I thought we were there first because we drove and they took an Uber and I get a drink and I go back there and he's like, I got you a drink. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't need it. So now me and him are sitting there with three drinks and we both kind of like shared the second one. And then we went into the photo booth. There's a photo booth there. So fun. I think we need to start doing that every single time we a go. A photo booth is so fun. Yeah. It's so, it's just so wholesome. And then we're I picking out it. the photos out of the photo booth. And my friend Riley picks out the, the photos and she hands three strips. And I'm like, three strips is usually two. And we look at them and I'm like, these girls aren't us. Mm. It was a group of three other girls, but they were all brunettes. And when you first look at it, you're like, oh, I think that's me. Because they kind of look like us, like two of us are brunette. And yeah. I was like, oh, like I go, wait a second, that's not us. No. So I, I look at Riley, I go, let's try to find them. And we're like circling around the bar trying to find them. They're not, not there. So I posted on my Instagram and I'm like, if you guys know these girls, let me know. I would love to give this photo back to them. And I didn't even see it until the morning because the service over on the east side is so bad. But I got a swipe up from one of the girls in the photos and I was like, oh my God, that's me. And I was like, oh my God, no. Like if I saw this message. Wait, you early, got a, that's me? Yes. And I... I I was like, oh my God, if I saw this message last night, I would have tried to give you that photo back, but I don't have it anymore. Like, damn, I left it behind. So damn, how unfortunate. I know. Which small world. Then on Sunday at the Super Bowl, one of the girls from the other friend group, the short blonde, she came up to me and was like, oh my God, that's my girlfriend. Like she sent it in our group chat and was like, look what I found. And they were all that's like so cracking funny. up about it. I was like, oh my God, small world. Like how ironic. So yeah, they never got it, unfortunately. Damn. Well, we have our pictures, and they were really cute. And then we went to Latchkey, which is classic behavior. I hadn't been there since, like, November. I haven't been there in so long. But it was just so nice to just dance with the girls again. Like, didn't feel like I needed a drink. Like, we were all on top of the back corner on table. on the table like nobody's business. Like, fucking that shit up. It was so fun. And then... There were some weird, like, guy encounters I had. This one guy that liked me on Hinge, and I only remember because we have a mutual friend, was, like, following me the whole night. And it icks me out so bad when a guy has no balls. Like, why are you standing next to me and straight up following me? Came up on the picnic table, standing, like, right next to me. But, like, I'm not going to talk to you. I didn't match with him. He just liked me. So, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I know who you are. I get off. He gets off and follows me and my friend. And sometimes you're in your own head where you think everyone cares about you. But, like, maybe they don't. So since he was following me and our friend, I asked her, I'm like, that guy was following us. And she was like, oh, for sure. I'm like, OK, I didn't want to I didn't know if I was just like gassing myself up. And yeah, like, it's always better to get like a second opinion because yeah, you're never it's like, no, bitch, maybe he wasn't following you. He was just getting a drink. Yeah, you no, know? no. He was dead ass following us. I'm like, OK, I'm glad you also saw that because what the fuck? And then he followed me on Instagram yesterday. And I'm like, have you could have said hello instead of following me around. I wanted to turn around and be like, do can I help you? Like, why are you just trailing behind me? Yeah. You speak to me or like buy me a drink. That gives me the ick, not going to lie. If that yes. happened to me. Like, well, don't follow me around and not say anything. Like, have balls. That's like girl behavior. Girls are supposed to do that. Yes. Not you. Well, before all this even happened, guys, we're on the table and it's all the girls on the table. Some of the guys are on the table, too. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a group of six bald women come running in. And they come right over to our table. They're on the ground. And I look at them and I go, oh, my God, they're pit bulls. And I, I told a few of them to, like, come up on the table. And then all of a sudden I was like, this is such a small fucking world. Like, these girls are dressed like pit bull. Taylor used to date pit bull's the son. The pit bull concert was this weekend in Austin. Yeah. And I was like, this is crazy. So I'm on the table. And you know how on Snapchat you can make the screen black and then you can type out text and you put it on your forehead. Guys, Sam loves to do that. I love doing it. She held her phone on her forehead for maybe 30 minutes. Yeah. So I typed it up. I'm with Pitbull on my forehead. Because 
like honestly, some of the people looking at these bald girls are probably not going to instantly think, oh, that's Pitbull. Some people, niche people will understand, but some people won't. So I was like, I'm going to put it on my forehead. The second I put that on my forehead, the amount of phones with flashlights that just like came out and were like videotaping all the Pitbull girls. I was like, yeah, like this is so fun. So I kept it on my head like like Taylor said, for maybe 30 minutes. Just like, yeah, I'm with Pitbull. And then one of Pitbull's songs came on too, and I was like, no way. Yeah, I sent a picture of the Pitbulls to um, to Mr. 305, my ex-boyfriend. I did send it to him. I was like, I'm dead. He was just like, LMFAO. And I told him, like, the Pitbull concerts this weekend. He's like, you should go buy a ticket. I'm like, no, what the fuck? Like, who do you think I am? But I did send him a picture of the Pitbulls. The Pitbulls were also my ex-boyfriend's friends. Mr. Hinge's friends. That's just a good thing to note. They were his friends. So, you know what that means? Maybe they talked about me the next day, which is always good for the program when people bring you up. Um, but he can't forget about me, but it was his friends. So that was just important to note. Yeah. Because Austin's so small. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, but. Every now and then, I'll realize how bad my auditory processing is. And this night, for for some odd reason, I could not fucking hear a single person talk to me. And it was making me so anxious. Like, like no other, like, we weren't even close to the speakers where the speakers are in the other corner. And just, like, all night, I just, like, couldn't hear anyone talk. And I was getting so in my head. I think it's when I, like, self-realize that, like, I can't hear. And then it gets worse because I am realizing I can't hear. Mm -hmm. And, bro, I was getting so overstimulated. I was like, I need to fucking leave. And that's when Taylor was like, okay, let's go. And I was like, oh, my God, thank God. Let's leave. I was kind of having fun, which is weird because I was sober. And, like, you kind of wanted to leave. And then you got distracted. But I was like, I don't want to leave. Which is weird because normally if I'm sober, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get out of this bitch. I'm telling you, it was a really good. I did not need alcohol. I could have stayed out like all night. Yeah. It was just fine by. Yeah, we didn't leave until 12:30, which is late for us. Yeah, I didn't go to bed till 2. Yeah. By the time I took my makeup off, read my fucking book, um just ate a snack. I didn't go to bed until 2 in the morning and then S- Sam's boyfriend is oh a fucking God. lunatic, so he was being all loud like Dude, oh. I knew too. I wanted to get a good night's sleep, and when he was like, "I'm I'm sleeping over," he was so drunk, like insanely drunk compared to me. He literally thought he saw a freaking body on the side of the road in a in a wrapped in a blanket when it was it was just a a blanket, a wet blanket on the on the curb. It mayhem. This man's and he comes over, and I'm like, I just know I'm not gonna get any sleep tonight. He wouldn't stop yapping, 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 and I was like, you need to either stop yapping. Or go home, and yeah, I was like, go home. I was like, you just need to go home. <laughs> and finally, at two in the morning, he Ubered home, and I was like, thank God, I need to go to bed. Because if he didn't Uber home, we probably wouldn't have gone to bed until like four in the morning. Yeah, it was a long fucking night. But thank God, the next day we kind of did nothing. Yeah, we didn't. Well, no, that's such a lie. Didn't do anything. Oh no, Saturday. Yeah, I didn't do much Saturday. Actually, no, I went to brunch with two of my girlfriends. Um. And then freaking I'm at brunch and I told my boyfriend what I was doing and where I was going. Mm -hmm. And my boyfriend shows up at brunch with his best guy friend and they're sitting at a table across the restaurant. And I told the waiter because like I didn't think he was actually going to show up, but he made a joke of like, oh, I'm going to come in and invade like the girl's brunch. And I'm like, if he does this, I'm going to be pissed because like this is girl time. And I told the waiter, I was like, if my boyfriend shows up like this restaurant is empty i was like you're gonna re- you're gonna know who he is please sit him on the other side so he's over there and he shows up and him and his friend get bottle service at brunch and they're having a boozy ass brunch and i was like you know what it's time for me to dip on saturday we also got the best food we've ever had in our entire life from a food truck we got these tacos sam was like let's go to this food truck and get tacos like you know chill vibes pick up something quick It's in the middle of this field behind a distillery way back. Of course, it can't be right up by the building. It has to be like fucking 200 yards back through the mud. So it's pouring rain. It starts pouring right when we get there. We're like running in the mud to order these tacos. We're almost we're like, fuck, dude, like this was such a big mistake. Like shouldn't have come. Whatever. So we order our tacos. We run under the shelter of the of the distillery. People have their kids that are like being menaces, throwing paper airplanes at us. Throwing paper airplanes. I'm like, bro. And Sam had Mac, so Mac is getting all muddy. We're really like, this was such a bad idea. Fuck. Yeah. Why did we do this to ourselves? But then we pick up the food, (laughs) 
and y'all these tacos were like next level we were standing if you guys saw us like it was one of those moments where it's like like us why don't cute boys talk to us when we're out us out like hunched over this table we had no napkins dirty hands pouring rain muddy feet fucking shoving these tacos in our mouth they were so good it was it was incredible they were insane and they're like authentic tacos they're not the typical like american tacos like these are authentic mexican tacos from just a husband and a wife that have a food truck together i tried going the week before and they had sold out and they were like we're so sorry like blah 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 like really apologetic i was like it's literally okay like yeah i'm happy that you guys sold out we'll come back next week and so that's when taylor and i went back ne- next week and we got um three different tacos and we were, we were like let's try them all at the same time like the same type one best one was for last it was the braised beef oh my god guys i want to go back there and get just three of those ones it was so good i like the first one too yeah the pastor one one. the pastor one was really good we each got three tacos and we didn't even look at each other's orders but we ordered the same thing yeah classic yeah right it was it was so good it was called un mundo um behind fierce whisker distillery guys so good like next level so we go back to her boyfriend's house with his roommate and we're playing games raving to them about the tacos and i think they thought that we were kidding it's like they were so good and we're like no no no, we're not kidding like you need to go get these tacos now because like it just sounds silly when we're like explaining like a food truck like a food truck of tacos like they were so good like okay guys like cool like awesome i'm like no you need to go like i was getting pissed (laughs) yeah the next day you literally ask his roommate did you go yeah like no <laughs> we're like, like when would i be able to go i'm like today should have fucking went for breakfast. now <laughs> but we played Catan, we played monopoly and then we got delights fire so good fire i love going to delights and getting fresh on the cone ice cream on the cone no seriously ah get away from me <laughs> <laughs> don't touch me <laughs> God, <laughs> he just wants to be pet by you. No. <laughs> anyway, so we literally had such a chill game night, just hung out. Yeah, and then the next morning was obviously the football, the Super Bowl. Baby. I ran actually seven miles, which was not what I intended to do at all. If you saw my vlog that I posted on TikTok and re- on Reels, I was only intentionally trying to do six miles, but then ended up doing seven. So. I love that. I'm very proud of myself for that. And I will probably try to do that maybe like every other week, like that distance. I'm not going to do it every week. That's just absurd. But maybe every other week, every weekend. You'll get to the point where you can do it every week. Yeah, but I just, yeah, I guess. I guess I just don't feel the need to. Yeah, yeah, fair. Put my body through that. But Fair. I mean, I worked out, um, did my workouts, whatever. Then we got lunch. Yeah, the I, lunch was really good. Yeah, a little healthy lunch. And then it was like kind of time for Super Bowl, mm-hmm. which like and then we already talked about Super Bowl and what we thought about Super Bowl. Yeah, the the run really knocked me the fuck out. Like I was so tired sitting there. You were. You were. I was like bad. knocked out from that run. And I was like, I can't be here anymore. So we ended up leaving the party we were at because we were at a party being like trying to be social at a party where everyone's drinking. I'm tired. And I was like, you know what? My boyfriend lives two like blocks down the road i was like can we just go back to your house and watch the halftime show at your house because it was so loud in there i was like i want to make sure i can hear the halftime well, they had show the volume down on the tvs yeah and i'm like i want to hear what's going on what the fuck yeah so we ended up leaving and then we ended up finishing the rest of the game at the house yeah watched it at home went into overtime i was like can this be done already fuck yeah <laughs> i just wanted to go to bed but oh the other thing i want to talk about really quick about the super bowl the 49ers in all the press conferences after, said they didn't know the overtime rules. Which, I'm sorry. First of all, the ref said the rules. I heard them. I don't play professional football. I don't understand football rules. I heard the ref say the rules, and I understood them. The whole team was like, we didn't know the rules, because they changed the overtime rules, I guess, like two years ago. These motherfuckers are out here saying they didn't know the rules. Like, how are you playing in the Super Bowl and you say, I we didn't know the rules? It it's just crazy that they gave like the Chiefs the ball second and said they didn't know the rules. Like, you gotta know the fucking rules of the Super Bowl. That was just crazy. Like, that is crazy that they said they didn't know the rules. Like, don't you play professional football? I don't know. 
like I heard the rules. I watched. The ref said the rules. And they're like, we didn't know. That's a big L on your part to lose because you didn't know the rules. Yeah. That's crazy town. Like they literally they literally lost they would have won the Super Bowl if they knew the rules. Like how do you not know the rules? Excuses. No, like they really like how do you not know the rules? Like for real. Like you were there. Like you play the sport. I don't know. Whatever. Sucks. Guess you gotta read the fine print people. Follow directions. Yeah. Follow um, directions. Anyways, Monday and Tuesday were really hectic. That's why we're recording late. I was moving the last two days. Craziness. I am so happy that it's like almost over. I have a lot of furniture that's getting delivered this week. But other than that, when you buy nice ass furniture, it gets delivered and built for you. Whereas if you get furniture from like Wayfair or like Ikea, you can pay for the extra money for them to build it. But you might as well just get your furniture from nice ass places like Casterly, Pottery Barn, West Elm, CB2, because when it gets delivered, the building white glove delivery is a part of the the price. So it's just nice that a lot of my furniture is just going to be built for me. Yeah. And I got my fridge yesterday. Microwave's coming tomorrow, but hopefully by the end of the week, I'm going to feel like it's really home, homey. No um, couch yet, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Valentine's Day, for the last little bit of this episode... I told Sam, because we got in this conversation in our personal life, um, that we should talk about love languages Mm -hmm. and what our love languages are. Because I think this is also good insight. If you guys remember me saying, like, just little things about us that I wonder if you guys can get. Like, a kind of who's more likely to or who cares about what. Just a little insight into our personalities that you guys might not know from things we post. Mm Because I think this is interesting. I'm a big, I love to know people's love language. And like Sam's boyfriends told her that boyfriends, boyfriend told her that love languages aren't real. Yeah. He's trying to like gaslight me into telling me like, that's not real. Like you, you girls make these things up. You girls like see TikToks about something and you just like, I'll run for it. He was like, I bet you literally looked up on Google what a love language is and then scrolled through the list of the languages and picked a few of them. I'm like, duh, what else would you do? I'm like, yeah, obviously. All it means is like, what do you value? Yeah. Like what is important to you? Yeah. That's all it means is what's important to you. Do you know what yours are? Oh, a hundred percent. And I kind of always n- have known what these ones are. And I've really started to realize it while being in this relationship. The first one that I ever realized at the very beginning of my relationship with him was affection in person, like physical touch, physical touch. And just not being embarrassed to touch me or kiss me in public. I'm not talking PDA, but like hold my hand, come up from behind or kiss me on the forehead, like in public, like show me off like I'm yours. And that was something that he wasn't really good at at the beginning because he just always thought like people are staring. It's PDA. And I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's really not like that. He's gotten so comfortable doing that because we got in like a little bit of a fight at the beginning of our relationship, like the first two weeks of us dating of me being like, dude, like you don't hold my hand or kiss me in public. Like, what the hell? And he was like, well, I'm just like not used to that. Like, that's just not something I usually do. I'm not used to doing stuff like that. And I'm like, no, like I need that. I love that. And after having that conversation, he flipped a switch and that's something that he does all the time. And I'm just like, wow, it's crazy to see how much you've changed since the beginning of our relationship. Like now he'll grab me touches me kisses me like is all up in my business in public and i'm like see how things have changed (laughs) yeah i not changed my love languages but just like realized more what they were like i think i thought they were more one thing but i realized they're other things words of affirmation huge for me and i'd never had that as a top one i thought it was quality time and acts of service and a little bit of physical touch but i realized words of affirmation is so huge Because in my last relationship, just dating someone who's not very emotional, I realized that that, like, actually really... Like, missing that. Yeah, like, I need, like, I'm so the type of girlfriend that's like, why do you love me? Yeah. Like, why do you love me? Like, what do you love about me? Like, I need to, like, know and, like, hear it. And I think that's also, I was telling Sam that, like, my biggest love language, this isn't, like, one, an official one, but it's music. Like, I love music. I'm so connected to music. That's why I like to dance. I love music. And a big part of it is, like, in the words of affirmations way. Like, when I listen to a love song, like, the new Noah Khan song, I'm like, oh, my God, I want someone to feel this way about me. Mm-hmm. Like, the the fact that he wrote this song about someone 
Do you like, want your significant other to write a song about you? No. A poet? I could do someone that writes songs, but that doesn't sing them. Unless, well, mm, it depends on the, it has to be like, you have to be really good at it. Because if, if you were like Noah Khan, like, yes. You yeah, then be, like, like, put that shit out there. You can't be like a wannabe, like, it can't be like my wannabe rapper ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Can't be, that. can't be that. It has, you have to be really good at it. But it's more so like the feeling of it. I don't know. Like, I just realized it's really important to me. Yeah, mine's not hearing love. Mine's seeing love. So, acts of service. Acts of service is, is probably my second one. Like, this is another thing. And guys, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, well, my boyfriend doesn't do anything for me with my ways of receiving love, you need to have these conversations with them because they're not going to read your minds on what your love languages are. Yeah. When I started dating my boyfriend, he never really did like these little small things of showing me love of through acts of service. And after having that conversation with him, he does it all the time. Like this week alone, he's brought in over an Olipop and then like my favorite desserts, like flowers, like it's insane how much it's changed in our relationship after being vocal about it. And you need to be vocal about it. They're not going to read your mind. So acts of service is huge for me. And I'm not saying like, buy me like yeah, designer that's, that's bags. Gift giving. Like yeah. Buying designer bags would be like gift giving. Yeah, I, I guess. So, um, but anyways, just like the little things make me so happy. And sometimes in a man's mind, they may think of that as, Oh, so spend money on me. no, don't Wait, it, so do you think yours is gift giving or mm, acts of service like acts of service okay because well it's a mix of the two so like yes cook for me or like cook you're for at you okay you're I, at because yeah, i think the same thing i'm not like putting you on the spot i'm like asking. yeah no like you're you're at starbucks and you were getting yourself a coffee and you were coming to see me like you got me a coffee like I agree. just like things like that and it's like you don't have to spend crazy money on me because i will note that and i will do the same in return for you but it's more of I want to know you're thinking of me in certain scenarios. Like he was at the grocery store getting his groceries and then was going to come over after. So he bought me an Olipop and a little dessert and came over with it. It's like, and then last night he cooked dinner for me or opening the car door for me. What else? Like just all those random little things. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Cause I'm the same way that I blame my father for my acts of service love language because my dad does everything for me. And to me, that's just standard. Like, my dad will do anything for me. Um, so, sorry, boys, but, like, you just set the standard fucking high. And I think that's, like, a dad's job. But, like, the standard's really up there for doing literally everything for me. But I'd agree on, like, the little things that, like, teeter between gift giving and acts of service. But I agree. I find them more acts of service, too, where it's, like, if I was going to go get a coffee myself that day and you just did it for me, it's, like oh, now I don't have to go get it and you brought it to me. Not necessarily like you brought me a gift, but oh, that was something I was going to do today and you like did it for me. Yeah, like another example is when we were going to the bars two weekends ago and I was meeting up with them. I was with the girls first and then meeting up with the rest of the crew and I was like, I'm on my way. Can't wait to see you. Oh, I can't wait for my like Lucky Duck Express Martini. He's like, don't worry, I'll have one waiting for you. Yeah. It's like, you just read my mind. You're going to have one sitting ready for me so I don't have to go wait in line at the bar. You're going to get me a drink like... I love that. Yeah. Or like, again, like good reference to like something my dad would do, like car problems. I don't want to deal with my car. Mm -mm. I'm a fucking girl. Like if I told you my car's electric, but like, let's say I need to charge. I need to go like the supercharger. I guess that's my um, equivalent. But if I was like, fuck, I need gas. And like, I woke up and like someone got up first and like did it for me. Mm -hmm. Like that's something like that's something my dad would do. Yeah. It's like if I told my dad I need gas, he'd get it at five in the morning. Like if I had to leave at six, he'd be like, I go get it at five. And like, thank you like that's what i want like oh my airs are my tires are like flat they need air go get it i'm not going to get it yeah you get it like just like do and like without being asked i feel like that's like that to me is gonna be like what makes me be like oh i want to like marry you is like doing shit like that without being asked like and i know like men at some point are all still men and no men no man is perfect but like I don't know. I feel like there's little things when you date someone, especially like at this age where you have to ask like, okay, well, like if you, if I cook, like, can you please clean up after? And it's like, why do I have to say that? Like, just do it. Like mm -hmm. if I cooked, like, can't you just do it? Like I just did all the cooking, just like little things like that. But opening the car door, my ex-boyfriend used to always open the door and like never let me touch the door. Like mm -hmm. that's important to me too. Yeah. 
just like little things where it's like you don't want me to be inconvenienced because gift giving these are why things are not my love language my first boyfriend mr Tico five ruined gift giving for me i put no value in expensive gifts like not no value obviously that's a very nice thing to do i he would get me nice things obviously um but they were used as very much so like well i did this for you how are you gonna be mad at me if i bought this for yeah. us don't buy me something to use it against me i don't want it like i never asked you for it take it return it i don't give a fuck like I don't care. Yeah, about that's some manipulative or behavior. Or like for the thank you. Yeah. Like if that makes sense. Like, well, I bought us this and like you didn't give me like the thank you I wanted. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, that's not the point. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't do it because you want some reaction out of me. You do it because you want me to have it. Not because you want me to react a certain way. Like, so that's why I kind of like, took away gift giving for me. I'm like, because you can get the nicest things from anyone. Like, anyone with money could buy you fucking shoes. Yeah. That's not, like, buying me a coffee is more wanna, meaningful than buying me shoes. If, like, I don't have service. Though. It's, you want to look at the questions? No, I want to, I wanted to play this one TikTok that I have. Oh, oh you have Wi-Fi, right? No, but I've like some I don't have Wi Fi right now. It's not set up yet. Oh. Yeah, guys, we're having uh Wi Fi issues. But um I have questions on my phone. But anyways, what I was saying is just like gift giving to me, like I don't give a fuck if you're buying me like designer things all the time. Like I would rather someone buy me a coffee every day or like something that I really, really like than buy me designer things. Especially if they're designer things that like you never even said you wanted. They just buy them because it costs money. It's just like anyone can do that. Fuck. It's not going to play. But I reposted it on TikTok and it's um, Chrissy Sella, mm-hmm. who is the owner of what is the brand? One Active or something? Yeah. Like that? One, I know yeah. Who you're talking about. So she was on a podcast and she's single. I, th- I think maybe single. I don't, I don't know. Or either way, she's a business owner. She owns her own house. Like she basically was just explaining what she's looking for in a man saying that she wants someone that, and like, I totally agree on this. Cause I feel like I'm kind of in similar situations of like, I just bought a house. I have two dogs. I have my fan finances figure out. Like I don't want a man that is going to financially replace that for me. I want a man that is going to like nur- nourish me, like take away any of my anxiety, my stress add into my life. Not like, financially be there for me Mm -hmm. not someone who's with the gift receiving like i don't need you to constantly be giving me gifts i want you to be someone that's going to help aid in my like emotional needs which is i wish i could play the fucking tiktok she worded it perfectly because it's like if you took a list of the good things someone does and like one of them was getting you nice things i'm obviously not gonna be mad if i like had a perfect boyfriend and they also bought me nice things but if i had to pick a quality to go that's going first Mm -hmm. a million percent like 100 percent quality time is another important thing for me but i wouldn't say it's up there in my love languages because i think quality time needs to have the words of affirmation and like the acts of service for me to like it if that makes sense like i love someone that plans a date but not so much i realize bear with me this might not make sense I like someone that plans a date, not so much because the act of being on the date is like the best hours of my life, but because you went out of your way to do something for me, which again, I feel is an act of service. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's more so the thought like, yeah, the you, thought of like, I want to be you with you plan a date. It's not that that date and that day was necessarily the best day of my life, but you went out of your way to buy tickets to something, book a reservation to something like I said, I liked. And to me, that's kind of like an act of, so it's the action of you doing it, like taking time after work when like you're busy and planning something. Yeah, that's I think it's important to me. Mine in that sense of the quality time is more of they are going out of their way to make sure we have plan because like, I don't know, I'm I always have plans. I always like having my weekends booked up and just knowing that like I want you to kind of fight for that spot in the weekend mm-hmm. to like see me and have one on one quality time with me because I want to do that. I want to make the plans with you. A girl's mind is always racing. Like I'm someone who's like, I'm my mind's always racing. If you can take that 
position for me and like make the plans knowing that you want to be hanging out with me one-on-one like that's a big deal to me too and it's so that's how i will start talking that's how my last boyfriend and me started dating is because like the effort put into the dates with me was very very impressive to me and like that that shows a lot for me if you put effort to plan dates and do things with me that i've like said are important hey i like this and the next day they're like oh i got us tickets to do this amazing 10 out of 10 the only reason i went on a date with the last guy from hinge is because they just planned a date yeah plan a date i'll go i appreciate that a lot like if i'm like oh like thank you for this whatever i'm not just saying thank you to be like polite like i mean it like i appreciate it if you make a fucking plan hence why someone just following you around latchkey um to try to get your attention that's gross like sorry Mm -hmm. i don't want you to just do that like put some fucking effort but yeah i consider that more an act of an act of service because i get kind of stir crazy um in one of my relationships we did a lot of just like hanging out at home like so much of it so much of it and i was like we haven't gone on a date like out so it's like yes we had a lot of quality time we went out every day Mm -hmm. alone so much but like it's the date it's like the action of the planning a date that was important to me because i'm like we've had quality time and physical touch up the ass but like can you make a dinner reservation yeah i agree oh my god future sneaky link just texted me don't worry guys i also am like so happy that i moved now that i can like actually hang which i last night felt no different but my boyfriend came over and it's like we've only really ever been able to hang out in my house in this house in our bedroom but i'm like i just like can't wait to do movie nights sitting on a couch making Mm -hmm. food and like just feeling so at home i haven't felt that yet with him because i always have to go to his house but like once i can finally do that i'm like we're gonna hang out so much more during the week because i I hate going to his house (laughs) i wanted to ask some of these questions okay to see what our different answers are it's more meaningful me it's more meaningful to me when either someone love someone i love sends me a loving note text email for no special reason or i hug someone i love i'm gonna go the wait what okay what's more meaningful someone sending you a loving text for no reason or someone hugs you the text same i feel like i've gotten better at hugging like my friends always hug me now and i'm like oh weird you don't hug me yeah we just kind of like built that friendship where we don't hug each other but my like other friends will hug me it's too late to start yeah you can't do that can't start hugging three years in yeah but all my other friends hug me and i'm like oh okay (laughs) yeah like i'm like so happy for you bought a house like i didn't hug you yeah congratulations weird yeah (laughs) my god i sent you flowers like i'm not giving you a hug that's crazy (laughs) don't touch me (laughs) i asked sam i'm like it's your last night here like we should have a sleepover she's like no i'm like (laughs) why would we do that (laughs) because like cute Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> it's more meaningful for me to me when I could spend a, alone time with someone I love just us or someone I love does something practical, practical to help me out. I'm going practical to help me out. Like what's a- more alone like, time, alone time. I'm like, I can only press my answers, but like, so like it'd be more meaningful for me to do something for me. It's more meaningful to me when someone I love gives me a little gift as a token of our love and concern for each other, or I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with those I love. The first one. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> the first one. Yeah, 100%. Some of these, like, they're hard to, like, equate to each other. Yeah, they're but, so like, opposite. Yeah, but that's... Some people really don't give a fuck for a little gift. I do. Well, I mean, if you're going to come over and hang out with me for some alone time, might as well bring a gift. You know what? So true. Yeah, right? It's like, wait, uninterrupted leisure time Uninterrupted leisure time would be great, but why can't you bring add Starbucks? the gifts? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're so right. You know what? Yeah. Why can't you? This is perfect. So uninterrupted leisure time would be great, but why don't you wake up, start my day with a long text about how much you love me, and I say, come over. You bring me a coffee, come over, spend the leisurely day with me, and while you're at my house, you do the dishes. Perfect. Why can't we do that? I love that idea. Because what's your love language? All of them. Yeah. And you also give me lots of hugs. I'm just doing... You know, wait, wait, baby. Maybe I'm starting to take your boyfriend's side. What do you mean? Not that love languages aren't real. 
because like you obviously everyone has things they value over other things but do them all yeah like <laughs> like do them all. i have high expectations because do them all all the time every what, day what are some of them though outside of the ones that we've talked about all the love languages okay words of affirmation quality time physical touch acts of service i'm forgetting one gift giving five. Oh, okay yeah and then people have their own specific love languages because some people are like my love language is cooking for other people act of service yeah that's a category is it like, that's what come i'm on saying now. my love language is music but words of affirmation yeah because it's like it gets characters really like, that's like the baseline for it and there's categories under each of those yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but i think it's important also not even just to know what you like to receive, but it's important to know how your partner gives love. So that way you can be like, understand like, oh, when they cooked for me, that's them saying that like, like that's them showing that they really, really care about me. Yeah. If you're like, yeah, I mine's would cooking. rather write them like love letters, but they don't write me love letters. It's like, okay, but they cook for you. And like, that's important to them. Yeah. Like knowing how people give love because you don't always give it the way you like to receive it. Mm hmm. Because you said your love language is cooking for someone, but like you don't need your boyfriend to cook for you. Not my breeder texting me, good morning, happy Valentine's Day. How, Whoa. Was, how was the first night? Question mark. Whoa, is he trying to slide in? I know, weird. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Sorry, I have a boyfriend, but like for free French bulldogs? The, um, what was I going to say? Cheese. S s oh my god, I cannot speak. He cried all night last night for my answer to back to him. Cried all night. Poor cheese man. I literally an hour and a half in the crate last night crying. Which Mac did the same thing when I first got Mac first night cried. So I'm hoping tonight it just goes goes mute. Poor cheese. I know. But Poor cheese. <laughs> Poor cheese man. Um yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. Just a little more Valentine's Day stuff. You have Valentine's Day plans? Yeah, we're going to dinner tonight. I'm going to dance tonight. <laughs> um, I have just so much to do, though, after this. To My Wi-Fi is getting installed at 12, so I got to leave here in about 30 minutes. And get my Wi-Fi installed, uh, connect my Alexa fridge, my Alexa, all my ring cameras, oh, my smart home. I have plans with a friend today and then I'm going to dance. You know, got to keep yourself busy so I don't sit home and cry all day. Yeah. Because, guys, I'm so down horrendous, but I can't keep talking about it. Like, I can't. it's fine. Like, I'm just so down bad, but it's okay because, like, I stayed occupied yesterday. Like, semi occupied yesterday because I had a hot man in my phone, which was like, that always makes you feel better. Yeah. It's always going to make you feel good when you have um, a guy you think is hot hitting you up. Guys, because this guy, see, I can always tell the T at the end. This is N T. Mm -hmm. It's like it's always like the off chance they click on it. I know they're not listening now. No, no, no. But like you know, like I post things on my story and listen. I'm a nosy bitch. Yeah. So like you got to say to the end because like they wouldn't listen this far. He's going to Miami this weekend, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so jealous. He's like, you should come, and I'm like, literally no. And then my friend is like, you don't work, just go. I'm like, no. Like I'm not gonna be a desperate loser. I'm not going. Like, yeah, but I mean, also I, so awkward to do that. Yeah, I mean, I live there, so it's like I wouldn't, like, be staying with him. Yeah. I'm like, no. And then he said again, he was like, come. And I'm like, no. Like, no. But I was like, but, because he was like, oh, like, well, like, fucking go out. I was like, let's just go out here, like, next weekend. He was like, okay, deal. But, like, he literally kept saying it, and then he was saying, because he's, like, a Dolphins fan, too, which, like, what are the odds? Right? Perfect for each other. Um, He was like, I think I'm going to go next year. And I was like, see, like, that's a trip. I'll crash. And he's like, I was expecting you to. And I'm like period he was being like so flirty yesterday which is like literally perfect sounds like over. a fuck boy perfect like that's what we need yeah but you're a lover girl and i don't think a sneaky link is gonna last for too long i had a sneaky link last year for like three months yeah but that was a, a friend yeah it's fine i i had a sneaky link from netflix boy yeah but that lasted two weeks no that was longer than that we were hanging out with them for a while. A month? That ended against my will. Yeah. That was not my doing. Yeah. And I didn't give a fuck. I didn't want to date him. Yeah. I did not want to date him. You think I wanted to date him? If all could have worked out, mm -mm. you would have wanted to. I mean, that w 
if all worked out as in if he like changed and became a different person that I wanted to date, but I didn't want to date him. Yeah. Like we were not, I did not want to date him. Sorry, my coffee. I did not want to date him. Like literally one time we went out and he like held my hand and like, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And later he was like, I don't know why I did that. I'm like, yeah, don't do that again. That was fucking weird. Those boys. Oh my God. He just said, oh, and happy Valentine's Day. Oh God. You know what I've been sick? Which I said No th- guys, also like Sam knows like the end game, like I have a husband in my end game. No one can direct me from my my goal. Who's the goal? My husband. I say that about so many people. Yeah, dude. The No. Why? <laughs> Taylor literally like pictures her entire future with someone that she's never even met. It's manifesting. That's what the wellness girlies call it. I'm manifesting. Crazy. I was going to say something, but now I forget. Listen, like, don't act like you weren't, like, absolutely Delulu the first time you met your boyfriend and, like, chased after him. Dude, duh. I met him. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I'll meet this person once and then, like, I'm going to set on my same path where I'm, like, laser focused on. I was so against him for the first, what, like, six months of knowing him. I thought he was crazy. And then I saw him crap dance and I was like, I'm in love. I should (laughs) have filmed that moment of you being like. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love him. (laughs) Listen, guys, like, you just have to manifest what you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, you manifest a job. You manifest a car. Manifest the husband that's all that's all i'm trying to say you gotta like aim high at my at my wedding you can talk about this yeah no i'll just pull up the clips yeah 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 we'll clip we'll play the podcast for the wedding at my wedding you can be like i thought she was crazy and i'll be like look at me now bitch no i'm gonna say you were still crazy this girl was so crazy that she planned the wedding before she even met you. And he's going to be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. I call it off. Did the papers already go to the courthouse? Don't fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like you're preying on my downfall. No, I'm not. I just sometimes the way you talk about your love for all these men, I'm like, yeah, but you know, I'm like I get so lost. So serious, though. I'm not. They're like crushes. Like, I have crushes. Like, I have internet crushes. I have big-time internet crushes. And this one, like, this guy, like, he's so my TikTok crush. And I think he's going to blow up soon. And he just, like, plays with me. Like, he, like, knows what he's doing. Because, like, he knows that I'm, like, wow, like, you're the love of my life. And I'm, like, can you stop playing with me? Because he's just, like, my TikTok crush. But he doesn't live here. So, like, that's never going to happen. But he just, like, plays with me too much. But, like, I'm not being serious. I'm very level-headed. I'm more level-headed than you would think. Trust me. I journal. I go to therapy. Yeah. I'm, like, kidding. Kind of. Not really. There's always half a Okay, half here's joke. what I'm not kidding about. I'm going to be so real. Here's what I'm not kidding about. This is real talk. Real talk. So serious. This man I'm texting right now, 100% want to sleep with him. For sure. No questions asked. Don't really want to date him. Doesn't give me date vibes give me fuck boy vibes which is like ideal love that because you gotta hate them the man i want to marry in an ideal world i do want to meet him i will meet him he's like always dming me like all the time so i will meet him and then like if he's not the worst person ever i'm like hopefully he's like i would hope like in a perfect scenario i meet him and he's like really really cool and we vibe and he like wants to literally date me in 2025 yeah like dead ass like he's so hot and like successful yeah i mean he's picture perfect he's for sure literally picture perfect which we don't know so i'm saying from the picture love we don't know yeah we gotta meet and if he sucks then he sucks and you know on to the fucking next but if he doesn't suck like keeping that door open because like hot six foot successful like that doesn't come across often no, it doesn't. That doesn't get in front of you. That doesn't get within grasp very frequently. They're ra- it's a rare breed. It is. So how am I supposed to sit here and not manifest it for myself? Yeah. You know? What am I going to do? Sit here and let that like get away from me? I have to try to manifest it. 
best of luck thank you thank you i appreciate that yeah yeah it's just like hopefully he's cool yeah go on a, go on a date with him and then we can talk about it i will <laughs> and i'll keep you guys updated i will next month don't worry guys don't worry i might go on a date with him first though <laughs> business meeting though i know i have a business meeting with the Tim so just like always talking about dating other men no i know um there's another brand that this man owns that he co-owns see co-founder of this other brand and i don't know if it's him that's the ceo that they're talking about or it's if it's his brother so we'll see who i ended up going to my meeting to yeah, he, small world yeah he mentioned that to me because we, we what often he mentions that he's getting coffee with me no not a meeting but that um he's sending that brand to he was like i know like we work with sam and i'm like so pay me too, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, right. You work with Sam. Run me a check. Yeah, but you fuck? can't, you can't business work with him and then also go oh, on a date oh, with him. Oh, guys, I also forgot to mention this. If, if 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 I don't marry him, we all know I'm being delusional. That's fine. I at least have the in that this is a really cool brand and a brand I like a lot. And y'all know I need a job. <laughs> so I'm either manifesting marrying this man, or networking so i can get a job which i kind of i i might want the job more i don't know though <laughs> well, i'll say anyways i'm so networking. busy i gotta go i gotta go too i got so much valentine's shit to do day, motherfuckers yeah happy valentine's day and i'll <sighs> see you guys next week bye bye